السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم God is the best He created the heaven and the earth What else? He created plants and the trees and food and he when he gets sick he he helps us to get better mm. and god is the best and he created the angels and all of the angels are good it's a pure one Was Eblus <laughs> turned into Satan? And you want him to go away? You see, I was a bit of a shit around you. <laughs> and then Farsi says, shit around you, bro. Farsi. And the ice and the penguins. Uh, God. That's okay. Okay, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to stay with me or go down? Okay, you can go back. <laughs> that was all him, by the way. He just, <laughs> he wanted to say those things. <laughs> Okay, so today I'm going to talk about God supports those who support him. And mashallah, so far today we've heard so many great things about God's support, trusting in God, um, having confidence in God. So um, kind of continuing what Shahriar was saying and what Makan was saying, um, I'm going to talk about what does God say about supporting him. 47.7, oh you... Actually, Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, you who believe, if you support God, he will support you and strengthen your foothold. Um, 2240, towards the end of the verse. Absolutely, God supports those who support him. God is powerful, almighty. What does supporting God mean? How do we support God? And how does he support us? First, let's talk about what the word support means. Um, this is the dictionary definition of it. The first one is to promote the interest or promote a cause. Um, the second definition is to uphold or defend as valid or right. And the other definition is to hold up. Promoting something is actively encouraging that thing to me. Um, people support and promote different causes all the time. You see people supporting the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, the Green Movement, Red Movement, Environmental Movement, Anti-Tax Movement, so many things, right? You see people who are so passionate about supporting these causes and they dedicate their lifetime to these causes. As submitters, we must have unwavering support for God and promote the truth given to us by God by upholding God's commandments and obeying God and his messenger. We learn from 2454 and 4733 and many more verses that we obey God and we obey his messenger. Does God need our support? No. Of course God doesn't need our support. He's God. He's, um, he gives us this chance to grow our soul through supporting his religion in order to redeem our souls because God is so merciful. Um, and I believe that whatever our focus is in life, uh, like our primary focus, and whatever we're putting most of our energy towards, um, we're primarily supporting that. So just ask yourself, do you want, do you, what do you want your primary, uh, what, what do you want to pr uh, primarily support? Do you want to support politics? Do you want to support like a movement or do you want to support God? Of course, there's nothing wrong with supporting um, other things in life, but you want to make sure you're supporting God and his religion first and give that priority um, in order to receive God's support. I'm going to read a verse, 9120. Neither the dwellers of the city nor the Arabs around them shall seek to stay behind the messenger of God when he mobilizes for war, nor shall they give priority to their own affairs over supporting him. 
This is because they do not suffer any thirst or any effort or hunger in the cause of God or take a single step that enrages the disbelievers or inflict any hardship upon the enemy without having it written down for them as a credit. God never fails to recompense those who work righteousness. 3160. If God supports you, none can defeat you. And if he abandons you, who else can support you? In God, the believers shall trust. And I think trust is... Um, a, a huge component of this um, mutual um, support between God and us. When we, su when we support God, we must absolutely believe and trust that he will support us back. Um, I'm going to give some examples, inshallah, of the um, prophets and their support for God and God's support for them. And... Um, you know, these are great examples, and we should remember that God cites the examples. Mashallah, earlier, people talked about Moses. Um, people talked about David, Solomon, and all these great examples. They're there in the Quran for us for a reason, um, for us to learn. And even though they were prophets and they received miracles, we need to realize that whatever is in the Quran, this is the prescription for all of us. It's for, it applies to all of our lives. We read this Quran and we follow it and we obey it and we will have that ultimate victory. Um, the ultimate victory is not only for the prophets and the messengers, it's for all the believers. Um, and in return for supporting God, what, what does God promise us? He has promised the believers exclusive rewards. He promises us, he promises um, the believers mercy, forgiveness, salvation. He promises them guidance, justice, security, an ultimate victory in this world and his eternal kingdom. He promises them dignity, prosperity, success, joy, peace of mind. What else do we want, right? This is all every human being like everyone we know strives for these things, to have this in their life. So God says, you uphold my commandments, you obey me and the messenger, and you will have this ultimate victory, and you will have all these things in life. And um, I want to read a verse, 23.1, successful indeed are the believers. Um, one example of trust and supporting God that comes to mind um, I was going to talk about Moses, but everybody talked about Moses already, so I'm going to skip that part. Um, I just wanted to reiterate the part where um, people were telling Moses, like, what are we going to do now, like, when the army was behind them, and, he's, and he says, um, no way, like, God, will, God is here with me. Um, but everyone talked about that, so I'm going to talk about David and Goliath. Um, so when the Israelites and the Philistines were at war, um, there was a valley. On one side, we had the Philistine, Philistines, and one side, it was the Israelites. And um, we've heard the name Goliath in the Quran. Um, I actually didn't know this, but Goliath is, in the Bible, referred to as a giant because he was so big. Um, in the Bible, in the book of Samuel, it says his height was six cubits and a span. And that is about nine feet and nine inches or three meters. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but we know that he was a, he was a big guy. He was really big. <laughs> so um, what happened was that, um, so, the, so we had Goliath on one side, on the um, side of the uh, Philistines, and then we had um, the Israelites, and David was one of them. And David, I believe, was the youngest brother of eight. And he, um, I think his father was a shepherd, Jesse, and he was helping him. He was kind of going back and forth to his father and back at the camp where the war was going to be. And um, he was just helping. And then one day when he came back to the camp, he saw Goliath, and he was like yelling and saying awful things about the God of, um, the, God of is the, Israel the Israelites. And um, David was like, who is this guy? And they were like, oh, this guy, like, he is, like, he's a warrior. And his people were terrified of Goliath, terrified. And um, so I'm going to read this from the Bible, actually, um, because I think it's a pretty interesting story. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I hope it's accurate. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read it. Samuel, um, this is um, the book of Samuel. So this is when Saul was at the camp. Saul replied, you're not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. 
When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the land of the Philistine. Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with me, and may the Lord be with you. So then um, we have this part of the story where, where Saul gives David like this, um, the armor and gives him other stuff he's wearing and David is walking around with it and he says, I cannot go in these because I am not used to them. So he took them off <laughs> and um, he just went down to the stream and he took five stones and he took his sling. He's like, I'm going to fight this guy. And they're like, no, like, what are you doing? He's a giant. You're like a young guy and you don't like know this guy. You, he's a trained warrior. And he tells them, he's like, I have God. I'll be fine. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to read from here. So, okay, so then the giant sees him and he looks at David and he saw, a, he saw that, was, that he, was a li- he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. <laughs> Um, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that there that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into um, our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, and this is Goliath, as he moved closer, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him, reaching into his bag and taking out a stone. He slung it and it struck Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell down Um, on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone without a sword in his hand, and he struck down the Philistine and killed him. So here we have a giant, we have a little boy, and uh, not a little boy, but he was younger, he was a youth, and he was like, I'm not scared of this guy because I have God. And he ran and and he ran towards him with a few stones and he killed him. And he was like, I have God, I'll be fine. so what does the Quran say about David and Goliath? 2.250. When they faced Goliath and his troops, they prayed, Our Lord, grant us steadfastness, strengthen our foothold, and support us against the disbelieving people. 2.251. They defeated them by God's leave, and David killed Goliath. God gave him kingship and wisdom and taught him as he willed. If it were not for God's support of some people against others, there would be chaos on earth. But God showers his grace upon the people. Just want to read a few verse, more verses about supporting God. 4:45, or God supporting us. 4:45. God knows best who your enemies are. God is the only Lord and Master. God is the only supporter. Um, just like the verses that talk about God being the only uh, protector and the best protector, we have verses that say God is the only supporter, the the best supporter. 789 says He's the best supporter. And um, 4.123, this is for the disbelievers. Is it, it is not in accordance with your wishes or the wishes of the people of the scripture. Anyone who commits evil pays for it and, it, and will have no helper or supporter against God. Um, can you, that is so, so scary. Can you imagine if you have no support, like nobody who has your back, nobody who's holding you up because you, you dismiss God, so you have no supporters. And that's how this life is for the disbelievers. They will have no supporter at the end of the day. So I would like to just read two more verses to conclude my speech. Happiness now and forever, 2215. If anyone thinks that God cannot support him in this life and in the hereafter, let him turn completely to his creator in heaven and sever his dependence on anyone else. He will then see that his, this plan eliminates anything that bothers him. 4735. Therefore, you shall not waver and surrender in pursuit of peace, for you are guaranteed victory, and God is with you. He will never waste your efforts. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, don't ask. I mean, I don't really. I don't know more than what I told you about the story of David and Goliath. So don't ask me about that. <laughs> but oh, you can. I was gonna ask. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can answer you. Any questions? Comments? Facts? Okay. So I actually I just have a little comment. Um, sure. A few years ago, they there was a show on uh, Discovery called like uh, Biblical Mythbusters, and they were positive that there's no way a young kid could throw a sl stone with a sling and kill a human being. They were they brought doctors in and everything, physicists, and uh, they ended up bringing like this. They still the shepherd's boys still have slings to like ward off wolves or whatever that comes near their sheep. Uh, so they bring a boy in uh, that they assumed was the age of David, and they put a big stick with the uh, telemeter, which would tell you like how hard something hit it. On top of that, at nine foot nine inches, and uh, just to prove that this can't be done, and the kid on the first sling uh, knocked it down <laughs> and proved that this could actually be done. Wow. So, so fun out. So God proved not only, and it didn't take him five shots either. On the first one, he did it. So, so fun out. Wow, thanks for sharing that. Any other questions or comments? Lisa, did you have a question? No, okay. I mean, you can, I can try, but okay. Just go read the book of Samuel. It's all in there. Who has a question? Firuza has a question. Oh. Ar Arsh, okay. Who? Okay, Arshan, ask your question. And Are you coming down? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> in a minute, inshallah. <laughs> Seriously? Okay, Peter's vision. Um, it's not a question. I just wanted to say that when we support God, God doesn't want our physical support. When we believe His word, the information that he sent through his messengers, his scripture, and following his commandments. This is about how we support God. Mm -hmm. But in return, he physically gives victory to the believers in this life and in the hereafter. So Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Thank you.